My grandfather died in 1963, having built up a huge uh, building contracting business and joinery works, and he was based in Dagenham. But unfortunately, there was a bit of family feuding about the will, and it wasn't really settled until about 1970. So by the time I was in the mood to uh, buy my first Ferrari, uh, the money had started to filter through, and, so, and by the end of 1971, it had appeared, and so um, I could you know, go looking for a car. I've been self-employed all my life and only worked for somebody for six months. And this was in uh, 1971. I got a job at RAF Weathersfield, which was an American air base actually with 7,000 personnel. And I got a job in the parts store. And what happened is the, the people came in, they ordered parts, we got them from Germany, and then they came back and picked them up. And it was my first introduction really to American cars, uh, Mustangs, Camaros, Thunderbirds and also the gorgeous women that drive them so really it was a dream job and uh, one day I was going to work in the Elan the hood was down and um, I was just about to turn into RF Weathersfield and I heard this screaming noise coming in the distance so I waited and uh, this gorgeous silver car came flying by me on a to him it was a right-hander and I could just see his front wheel lifting uh, and I thought, blimey, what a car is that? And um, I sort of dreamt about it all day. I knew what it was. It was a Ferrari 275 GTB. I, I picked up the number plate. I knew it ended 4D, but I didn't know anything else. A while later, I was filling up with petrol in uh, Eastern Garage in Finchyfield, and I saw the car in there being worked on, it having a new quarter bumper on it, because apparently a, a tractor had reversed into it. So I said to the owner, an old boy called Cyril, I said, whose car is that, Cyril? He says, oh, he said, it's the boy Yates. I said, well, I tell you what, if that ever comes up for sale, I said, could you contact me? Because I am very keen to buy it. So only a few months went by and uh, I was called and told to ring a number in Steeple Bumstead. And I rang up, it was a chap called Ian Yates. And um, I said, I'm quite keen on your car. And he said, oh, he was umming and ahhing. You know, I was only a youngster. He said, are you sure you can afford it? I said, well, depends how much it is. And he said, well, I want £2,600 for it. So I said, oh, I'll have it. And he said, well, do you want to see it? I said, no, I've seen it, I've seen it on the road. I said, but I am quite keen to buy it. Um, you know, when can I have it? And he said, well, when, you, when can you get the money? I said, I can have the money tomorrow. So um, I went the next day to the bank, I got a banker's draft, and in those days, banker's draft was an accepted um, way of paying. And um, I went to Steeple Bumpstead the next day, beautiful manor house, picked the car up and drove it home. I sold the car in 1974 and had heard hide and a hair of it since. I knew it had gone through a few owners, but I hadn't seen the car. So it was a great surprise to me when I was looking through car magazines and I saw the Talacrest advert with my car in with the same chassis number. So I knew it was mine. I contacted uh, Talacrest and asked whether or not I could see the car. And I sp uh, spoke to John Collins, who was very accommodating, told me where the car was, and off I went to see it. This is a bit like uh, Friends Reunited. I haven't seen this car for uh, 43 years. I owned it for two and a half years from 1972 to uh, August 1974. It's very, very, very rare. Um, it's a 275 GTB Ferrari and uh, they made in total 970 of the cars but they only made six like this. My big decision then was to either keep it silver or have it painted red and uh, I did actually have it painted red um, which probably thinking back on it was probably a bit of a mistake but in those days every Ferrari was red. So. Um, I uh, had a garage at the time in Blackmore End and I put it into the paint shop and um, told them to get on with it. We found the colour. We couldn't afford the Ferrari colour, which I think was Rosso. So we bought Ford Moderna Red, which was exactly the same, but about a tenth of the price. And um, they decided to strip down the car. Um, I think I was, um, I think it was out. Anyway, I got back and the sprayer said to me, Gordon, he said, oh, governor, he said, you better come and have a look at this. I thought, oh, God, it's cut and shut or something. 
And uh, he said, look, he said, it's, it's aluminium. I'm like, what, aluminium? I said, I didn't know they made them in aluminium. So I got in the car, I rushed home, I got out my uh, Ferrari book, and sure enough, there was six in aluminium, and I just bought one of them for 2,600 pounds. And it was a great, fun car to drive, and in fact, in the, uh, in the early 70s, you never, ever saw another Ferrari. You could go months, years without seeing another one. So um, an Essex boy in one of these was uh, quite something else. The GTB, um, I had that, bought that just before I got married, and um, my wife-to-be then was working in Scotland for some lords and ladies, she was uh, cooking for them. So I then had to decide how to broach to her that I had spent an amount of money. Because remember 2,600 pounds in 1972 was a lot of money because my first house only cost three and a half thousand. So I wasn't sure how it was gonna be received. So I, I uh, arranged to meet her at Colchester Station when she came down from Scotland. And um, I just parked up and sat on the bonnet, all nonchalant. And she came, I saw her approach onto the station platform and then through the doors of the station. And uh, she stood there, dropped her bags. That was just a sign that I had to go and pick them up. And um, she said, um, what's that? And uh, she's pointing to a little yellow badge on the front. And I said, well, you know, surely you know what that is. It's Rampante, Rampante Cavallino, the prancing horse. I said, it's a Ferrari. So she said, well, have we had one before? I said, no. She said, oh. She said, well, how much was it? So I told her, and we had a frosty ride home, and then it was with great glee that I told her that when I found out it was aluminium, that we had actually got a bargain, but uh, she didn't actually see it at that. I think she pretended not to like the car, um, but in the end, she just loved it. <laughs> uh, unusual that it's got uh, blue trim. And um, it's just one of those cars, actually, that I think over the years has got better looking. It's a piece of automotive art now. Um, I was very fortunate that a local farmer had it and um, I was able to buy it from him. We open up and look at the heart of the matter. This is a 3.3 litre V12, just under 300 brake horsepower. Not huge brake horsepower today, but then it was some power. It does well over 150 miles an hour and um, used petrol like it's going out of fashion. But then in those days, petrol wasn't really very expensive. Um, we've got a very, very small boot. Just about enough room for, uh, to get your shopping on a Friday when you visit Aldi's. Well, it's good to sit in here after all this time. Um, I do remember it. The seats are incredibly comfortable. They're quite small and um, great big chunky steering wheel. After the um, GTB went, I moved on to a Daytona. Uh, I then had a 365 uh, GT 2 plus 2, the one that they call the grandmother. Uh, that was a bit of an old sluggish old thing. I then had two Dinos, a 246 GTS and a 246 GT. And for a very short while, I had a 365 GTC4 in a strange sort of brown color. Mileage showing 78,000 now. I think I bought it at 28,000, and I think I did about six or 7,000 miles over those years. No radios, no stereo, no sat nav, no nothing. So quite a basic interior, but at the end of the day, it's a Ferrari. And um, I was very, very uh, lucky to own one and especially as I paid in 1972 the princely sum of £2,600. I understand now that this car is for sale in excess of £2 million. Um, about uh, two years ago I thought about writing a book about all these cars that I've had. I'd had a double dose of cancer so I thought well I'd better be quick um, and um, I put it all down in words, I got masses of photographs and a creative book called Let Them Stare. And I thought, well, once I've got my money back on the production, because I did self-publishing, um, then we'd 
helped um, give the money to Little Havens Children's Hospice in South End, which is a hospice that we've supported through our Lotus Owners Club uh, for about 12 or 13 years. So, um, yeah, it's, it's sold. It's not J.K. Rowling selling millions, but it has, uh, I think we're up to nearly, we're up to 1,300 copies at 15 quid a time. So, and everybody that's bought the book has just, you know, really fallen in love with it. And there's been, um, you know, no bad comment about it at all.